You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Same goes for the woman. Nor shall you mate with any animal to defile yourself with it. Nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. So, yes, um, if I were to sleep with a man like I would do with a woman, that's called homosexuality. If I were to sleep with an animal, that would be called bestiality. Not my word, God's word. Guys, welcome back again. Welcome back to another video. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button on your way in. Let's talk about it again. What is an abomination? Part number two. So, um, in the first one, we saw um, what abomination is. Okay? And now, we saw that there was there is an abomination when it comes to um, when it comes to the uh, food, but now we're gonna talk about when it comes to right, other things. Okay, so let's try to start right now. Um, now. What is considered abomination? So in the first time we looked at we looked at what can be considered abomination. We saw certain food that you eat. Um, if you are God's people, then certain food you shouldn't eat because because God said you should regard it as an abomination. This time we're gonna talk about something else. So like I said earlier, we looked at you know in the first video. Certain things that basically um, that can be globally or locally, meaning it might not be for everyone, it might be for a specific group of people. Apart from that list, meaning food that can be or cannot be eaten, there are other items that God considers to be an abomination. However, these items are more in a wider or global scale rather than for a group of people. And what are they? Well, this is the list. Um, uncovering some people of some people considered as wickedness. That's in Leviticus 18, verse 1 through verse 18. Um, children's sacrifice and uncovering of menstruating women, meaning they have their period, that's considered as profanity, from verse 19 to verse 21. We have homosexuality, um, considered as an abomination, Leviticus 18 verse 22. And we have bestiality, considered as perversion, in verse number 23. Now, as you are, following, as you are listening, you're going to find out that all of these that I mentioned are considered abomination in God's eyes. So, verse number from Leviticus 18, 1 to 18, about the uncovering of some people. Verse number 2 says, Speak to the children of, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord God, according to the things, to the doings of the land of Egypt where you dwelt, you shall not do. And according to the things, to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I'm bringing you, you shall not do, nor shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall observe my judgment and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statute and my judgment, which if a man does, he shall live by them. I am the Lord your God. None of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him to uncover his nakedness, his nakedness, I am the Lord. The nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother you shall not uncover. Meaning, you shall not sleep with your brother, sister, mother, father. You shall not have any sexual intercourse with them. She's your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Number eight, the nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. Nakedness. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or elsewhere, their nakedness 
you shall not uncover. And, and I'm pretty sure you guys can know that this is not just a God's people thing. Now we can see that people that do that kind of stuff, what happens to them? All kinds of issues when it comes to medical issues. So this is more like a global scale, but God wanted the Israelites to do that to the world so they can bring the message to the whole world. But it wasn't something that is just for them. It was for everyone, but of course, God always calls some people to bring the message to the rest of the world. Let's keep on moving. Um, verse number 10, The nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, their nakedness you shall not uncover. Meaning, grandparents and grandchildren, please do not do such a thing. For theirs is your own nakedness, the nakedness of your father's wife's daughter. Begotten by your father, she is your sister. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister. She is near, near kin to your father, that's your aunt. You shall not uh, uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, that's your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness, the nakedness of your father's brother, that's your uncle. Nor his wife, she is your aunt. Verse 15, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law, she's your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife, we, it is your brother's nakedness. You shall, meaning that meaning you're your sister-in-law, you shall not uncover the nakedness of, your, of a woman and her daughter, nor shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are near kin to her. It is what? wickedness. Nor shall you take a woman as a rival to her sister to uncover her nakedness while the other is alive. Meaning, if your wife is still alive, you cannot, you know, do that. Now, how about the children's sacrifice and uncovering of menstruating women? Well, also, verse number 19, you shall not conceive, you, this is considered as profanity. Also, you shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is in her customary impurity. That basically means she is bleeding. She has her period, her monthly cycle. And if you guys didn't know why you cannot be having sexual intercourse with a woman when she having her menstruation, that's it right here. So, if you guys wanted to know. Um, moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Moloch. And I, I put in parentheses, when God asked the Israelites to not mingle with the Canaanites, it was because of these children's sacrifice they were offering to Satan through a demon called Molech or Moloch. Nor shall you profane the name of the Lord I am the Lord. So, profanity is what? Profanity is sleeping with a woman when she is having her menstruation period or cycle, and then sleeping with your neighbor's wife and, and sacrificing your children to demon. That's profanity, um, which, is also, which, is, which is also an abomination. What is next? Homosexuality. And I'm pretty sure everyone already knows that, but um, chapter 18, verse 22, um, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman, it is an abomination. Same goes for the woman. So whether you are a man who is trying to lie with a man as you would with a woman, that's homosexuality. Whether you are a woman who is trying to lie with a woman as you would, as you would with a man, it's called homosexuality because same-sex um, intercourse, basically, or same-sex intimacy. What's next? Bestiality, um, chapter, which is considered a perversion. Verse number 23, Nor shall you mate with any animal to defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. So, yes, um, if I were to sleep with a man, like I would do with a woman, that's called homosexuality. If I were to sleep with an animal, that would be called 
bestiality. Not my word, God's word. Now, why is considered an abomination? Number four. So we just read in that chapter, Leviticus 18, we have different words describing abomination, such as wickedness and perversion. Which, why do I include those two words as an indication of abomination? Well, let's look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31 and 33. It says, Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his way, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, and but he blessed the home of the just. Bible says the perverse per, the perverse person is an abomination. What we do we just read about perversion. People that, that are that do perverse things is considered a perversion, meaning basality, which is a perversion. So when God calls perverse person that means whatever they are doing that is a that is called a perversion is an abomination to the lord let's keep on reading um also in chapter in verse chapter 8 verse 7 and 8 in proverbs for my mouth will speak truth wickedness is an abomination to my lips although my mouth or righteousness nothing is crooked or perverse or perverse is in them. So basically, wickedness, perversion is an abomination to God. What else? Um, going after Baal is an abomination as well as worshiping false gods. Hosea chapter 9, 10, 11. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first fruits of the fig tree in its first season. But they went to Baal Peor and separated themselves to the to that shame. They became an abomination like the thing they loved. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird, no bird, no birth, no pregnancy, or no conception. Which means basically idol worship, Satan worship, um, demon worship in God. In God's eyes, they are all considered abomination. Uh, what's next? Recap. So for the recap, what is considered an abomination? Well, wickedness is one, profanity is one, homosexuality is one, and perversion is one as well. So, That's it guys, so this is part number two. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about when abomination is not an abomination. And this is going to be very interesting. When you guys find out what I found, what God showed me. Other than that guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button on the way out. Again, this is the Open Road TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.